right now on five on your side at 10. The cool weather pattern continues. What you need to know is another batch of chilly air moves our way for the upcoming weekend. An innocent bystander killed as three robbery suspects tried to get away. It should not have affected my family. My son should be with me. Tonight, the message's family wants everyone to hear. Our top story, reparations for injustice in the city of St. Louis. Tonight, the first community discussion on what needs to change and how to implement it. About two hours ago, the newly appointed St. Louis Reparations Commission wrapped up its very first public meeting. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. Ann Allred has the night off. The commission is charged with looking at race-based injustices in the city and making recommendations to start healing. Our Laura Barczewski was at that meeting and she joins us live from City Hall. Laura. Mike, they had people from the public share some of their experiences and talk about some of the issues they want to see addressed for black owned businesses, the housing community, and even the criminal justice system, to name a few. The chair of the newly appointed St. Louis Reparations Commission says all nine members come from different backgrounds with one goal, to come up with solutions to racial injustices that plague the city of St. Louis. Well, I think St. Louis has a long history of racial disparities um, that have been driven through policy, and we see those realities every day, whether it's looking north of Del Mar, south of Del Mar, um, in tangible things like life expectancy and education outcomes. This meeting is the beginning of the first of three phases, where the commission heard from the public about issues they're facing. Contractor Anton Lumpkin says minority construction businesses are losing out on millions of dollars after programs to help them ended. They had contracts for 25,000 and under. This helps black contractors come in. You learn, you learn how to estimate, you learn how to build. That way when you get to the bigger contracts, like I was blessed enough to work with Clayco and build the sewers at the baseball stadium. I was three years out at the airport, blessed enough to get that, but it all started with the 25 and under. The vice chair of the commission says the lack of opportunity for minority groups is ongoing. And it really has unfortunately uh, left communities that have been devitalized and communities that have been uh, unable to reach their full potential because they haven't had access to all the capital, social capital and financial capital. Blake Strode with the Arch City Defenders says he hopes the commission can address issues in the criminal justice system as well. The imagery of black people in chains being hauled in front of judges and in front of lawyers and having their humanity debated out in public, that happens every single day in St. Louis. And so when people talk about modern day slavery, we really don't have to go very far. The commission says they really want people to come to these listening sessions and they'll be holding them at least once a month through July. So all you have to do is show up, fill out a public comment card or just step up to the mic. Reporting live from downtown St. Louis, Laura Barteski, five on your side. Tonight, another St. Louis judge is threatening to hold St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner's office in contempt of court for missing another trial. This latest threat comes as another judge decided he would not hold Gardner and her deputy in contempt for failing to show up at a murder trial last Monday. The judge said internal communications about the case prove the circuit attorney's office is in disarray, but there's no proof they purposely missed the hearing. Gardner herself did not attend Monday's hearing, which offended the victim's family. Um, it's very disturbing, taking the fact that um, it's dealing with the safety to the community for everyone else, as well as our family. It's just terrible. It's for our safety, the families, everybody out here, you know, I, it's just, it don't make sense. And we're kind of upset about this. Gardner or someone from her office has been ordered to appear before the judge on Thursday for that second threat of contempt of court. That case is over a shooting involving an 11 year old victim. New tonight, just a couple of hours ago, the St. Charles County Council confirmed Joe McCullough as the new prosecuting attorney. County Executive Steve Elman appointed him last week to fill the remainder of Tim Lomar's term. Lomar resigned last month after 12 years on the job. McCullough says he plans to personally prosecute some high profile cases. Just to show the people here that I'm, I'm not just uh, uh, 
a seat uh, warmer here that uh, I plan on being in this office for quite some time. McCullough, who is the brother of former St. Louis County prosecuting attorney Bob McCullough, assumes the office May 1st and he plans to run for re-election in 2024. Just a few hours ago, family and friends gathered to remember an innocent bystander killed in a crash. Jerome Hightower died earlier this month after a police chase that started in North County and ended in North City. Our Robert Townsend is live outside the St. Louis jail downtown where the accused driver is being held. Robert. Mike Darrell Powell is facing multiple charges. Today, Jerome Hightower's parents didn't want to talk about him. Instead, the grieving couple is focusing on the son they tragically lost. Cynthia Hightower has gotten great joy out of one tradition she's cherished for years with her son, Jerome Hightower. When we depart from each other, I'll kiss my son on his forehead and, and we'll hug each other and say, I love you. The St. Louis mom never imagined she would give Jerome his last hug and kiss on April 4th. I know my son shouldn't be dead. He didn't have anything to do with it. St. Louis County Police say that afternoon they got a call about a robbery at this Dollar General in North County. According to a probable cause statement, Daryl Powell drove Javon Crawford and Adriana Evans to the store. Police say Crawford and Evans stole a large amount of laundry detergent from the business. The three suspected robbers sped off in a maroon Kia and led officers on a chase. Whatever was going on over there, it should not have affected my family. Police say they tried to pull over the car and put down spike strips, but Powell refused to stop. Investigators say the chase continued for several miles until Powell crashed into Hightower's car near MLK Drive and Cora Avenue in the city. The 34-year-old father, Amazon employee, and lawn care service owner died at a hospital Today, Hightower's family buried him. My son, he was a good guy, and, and, and he did not deserve this. You know, he wasn't doing anything wrong. Two, three. A heartbreaking balloon release. God love you. God bless you. For 13-year-old Jerron Hightower's dad. He was a great father. He was... He was, he, was, he was good at everything. For my son to be gone, I don't understand it. All right. Powell is charged with second degree murder and other crimes. Tonight, Crawford and Evans are in the county jail. We're live downtown, Robert Townsend. Five on your side. A man is dead after an officer shot him following a traffic stop in St. Charles County. The shooting happened early this morning in Weldon Spring. Police found Tracy Hayes and a driver sitting in a car. The driver asked officers for directions, but when they asked for identification, police say Hayes got out of the passenger seat and ran. Fighting with him, um, the individual began to reach for a gun that was seen in his waistband. It's hard that there was a loss of life, but again, we train our officers to make sure that they're safe and that they take all precautions. The officer is 23 years old with two years on the force. Court records show Hayes has a lengthy criminal history and was on probation. The driver is cooperating with police while they investigate the shooting. Tonight, a St. Louis County man is in shock detention for his role in a fraternity hazing incident that left a Mizzou student with severe brain damage. Thomas Schultz pleaded guilty today to a single misdemeanor of supplying alcohol to a minor. As part of his plea deal, he was immediately sent to a 30-day boot camp style jail program. Danny Santulli suffered alcohol poisoning and was found unconscious in the Phi Gamma Delta house back in October 2021. Santulli's aunt gave a victim impact statement in court today. Thomas Schultz was 100% involved and responsible for the state that Danny is right now. He's not able to communicate, walk, talk, or see. I hope you can someday find in your heart to reach out to my family and right your wrong. Schultz will also serve one-year probation where he can't consume alcohol or enter a bar or liquor store. 
Two other fraternity members still await jury trials. New charges tonight for the man accused of cyber stalking several women, threatening to rape and kill them after he was released from prison for similar crimes. Now, St. Louis County prosecutors are charging Robert Merkel as a prior and persistent offender. The I team has been following this case for years. Merkel has pleaded guilty to similar crimes in 2018 and was sentenced to prison. He was charged in federal court last month and we sentenced in June. The new charge would increase his maximum sentence from four years to seven if he's convicted in St. Louis County Court. Developing tonight, the ACLU is suing to block new Missouri restrictions on both adults and children seeking gender affirming health care. Lawyers representing transgender Missourians and health care providers asked a St. Louis County judge to stop the first of its kind rule from kicking in on Thursday. Republican Attorney General Andrew Bailey has called the rule a way to protect minors from what he, what he describes as experimental treatments, although the restrictions also apply to adults. Tonight, a second senior marketing executive with Bud Light has been placed on leave. It comes following backlash in the wake of a social media partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Anheuser-Busch announced that Alyssa Heinerscheid's leave on Friday, and now her boss, Daniel Blake, has been placed on leave. According to the Wall Street Journal, the moves were not voluntary. Bird strike. All of a sudden, we heard somebody say, fire, fire. Tonight, new information on a mid-air scare over Ohio. Why bird strikes could be more common when flying out of St. Louis. A trip to the grocery store can be a budget buster. Tonight, supermarket savings that don't have to come at the expense of eating healthy. After a frosty start early this morning, clouds help us stay a little milder overnight. We are tracking the rain chances for later in the week and into the weekend. That's in eight minutes. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We had a bird strike in an engine failure. Tonight, we're learning more about an engine fire on an American Airlines flight yesterday that forced an emergency landing back to Columbus, Ohio. The plane landed safely. Tonight, we know American flight 1958 flew right into a flock of geese. Wildlife strikes are not unusual. In 2021, there are more than 15,000 reported, most of them birds, but losing an engine is rare. The Smithsonian Natural History Museum receives up to 100 bird remains a day from airports trying to identify the species posing a risk. Most bird strikes occur on takeoff and landing. So if we can do something to that immediate environment, we can really do a lot to prevent these bird strikes from happening. Airports use cannons, dogs, falcons, and owls to scare birds away. Migratory fly zones along the coast and the Mississippi River pose the greatest risk. President Biden is set to formally announce his presidential re-election bid as soon as tomorrow. But a new NBC News poll found 70% of Americans don't want him to run again. That includes 51% of Democrats. Many are pointing to his age. The president will turn 82 just weeks after the 2024 election. The same poll finds most Americans do not want a rematch of the 2020 Biden-Trump race. 60% of those polls say former President Donald Trump, the Republican frontrunner, should not run again. A consumer alert tonight for iPhone users. A new report in the Wall Street Journal warns about thieves locking people out of their own device. Thieves are creating new recovery keys to take over all your information and data. Some victims report their bank accounts were drained, but these hackers need your passcode and physical access to your phone before doing so. A lot of the times it's in crowded areas where the thieves are, you know, looking for people that are, are easy marks, easy targets, and they will watch them pull out their phones and watch them enter in their passcodes. Apple says it's always investigating additional protections against emerging threats. In the meantime, it's suggested you regularly back up your phone to the cloud and cover your screen while entering your passcode in public. Prices at the grocery store remain high, especially if you're wanting to eat healthy. Tonight, Consumer Reports shows us some easy ways to find budget-friendly and healthy products. We're all still suffering sticker shock over grocery prices, including Natalie Marie Rowe, a mom of two who shares the meals she makes her girls on Instagram. Feeding my family healthy foods and not breaking the bank has been a good challenge, especially the last year. All those increases might have you giving up on healthy eating. 
but Consumer Reports says finding savings on nutritious foods begins before you head to the store. First, make a list of what you need to help avoid impulse buys. Natalie takes this tip one step further in an effort to cut corners. You look at the sales, I look at them, I write things down, and then I create our weekly menu depending on what's on sale. You can also consider switching to the store brands of your favorite products. Consumer Reports testing found that they tend to cost between 5 and 72 percent less than the name brand products. And CR's taste testing experts found most of them tasted just as good as the name brand. And if you live near a discount grocery store like Aldi, their store brand products can be even cheaper. Another way to save? Fill your freezer. With frozen produce, you only have to take out as much as you need for that meal. And if meat prices are taking too much from your family food budget, CR says one way to fight back is to try some plant-based proteins. Plant-based foods like beans and tofu tend to be less expensive than poultry, meat, or seafood. Finally, skip the pre-cut fruits and veggies from the store. They may be more convenient, but the cost is often much higher per pound. Although it may take more time to do your own slicing and dicing, it'll definitely save you money. Consumer Reports says another way to save is to plan a week's meals ahead of time so you're not buying more food than you need. Well, Bed Bath & Beyond is shutting its doors. The big box retailer known for home textiles, housewares, and decorative home accessories filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy over the weekend. The company's 360 stores and website will remain open during the liquidation process. Tonight we're learning they'll stop accepting those popular coupons you may have piled up. They'll stop accepting those on Wednesday. The company expects to honor gift cards and certificates through May 8th and will continue to accept returns and exchanges through May 24th. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us now with that weather first forecast. And we did have a bounce back day today, didn't we? Scott? It was, you know, what a cold start early right. this morning. Some spots down into the 20s. Bourbon, one of those colder spots. Roy shared this photo. The horses didn't seem to mind being out on that frosty field early this morning, but as the sun came up, temperatures warmed back into the lower 60s for us in St. Louis. Now this looks pretty active across the region. Yes, there are a few sprinkles reaching the ground across the Missouri Iowa border and back across the Kansas Oklahoma border, but this is more cloud cover than anything else. Right now around the St. Louis area, it's pretty quiet. Not going to be as cold the next few nights, so we're not talking about frost and freeze. Air is extremely dry, at least near the ground, which means those showers that we're seeing on radar, they're in the mid levels and those raindrops just can't really reach the ground. Shower chances though will increase as we head towards the end of the week. So it looks impressive on the radar screen, but again, what we're seeing to the north of St. Louis, pretty much not reaching the ground. Very little of it is anyway. Same sort of scenario plays out here south of Wichita. Get back into the mountains though, and here's our next weather system. That will be diving more to the south than to the east, but it does leave us with a fair amount of cloud cover over the next couple of days. Right now it's 56 degrees still in St. Louis. 64 was the high. Look at that low this morning, down to 36 degrees. Two points 30, so the air again very dry at this point. Winds are out of the south southeast. They're not overly strong, but enough to keep things stirred up, mixed up, and with the clouds, keep our temperatures in the 40s overnight. You're going to see some sunshine tomorrow, but there's also a little more in the way of cloud cover than what we saw today. And our temperatures should top out in the upper 60s. Next bigger weather systems really towards the end of the week. We do have another front coming in. It's another surge of chilly air just in time for the weekend. It will increase our chances for showers, particularly as we head into Friday night on into Saturday. But unlike this last bout of cold air, this batch should not be quite as cold, but we will start the weekend with damp conditions and that shower chance as we head from Friday night into Saturday. Doesn't look like the rain will be particularly heavy, but it's also going to be chilly for the upcoming weekend. About 10 degrees warmer Saturday compared to this past Saturday when we only hit 49, should be around 59 this weekend. Temperatures will go back into the 60s next week. Bottom line is we're staying well below average here temperature wise. Average high tomorrow 71 degrees. 
We're not getting there for a few days, Mike. And we need to do something about these weekends, Scott. I know. The weekend, we're, we're in that pattern. We'll see what we can do. All right. Thanks. Frank is here with sports. City SC has an intriguing game tomorrow. The Battle Hawks coach says he's coming back. And in just a couple of minutes, we're playing hit and run with Albert Pujols. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. It's really like the most bizarre stat. The Cardinals have not won the opening game of a series all season long. Not a small sample size. They are 0-7. In 1988, they were 0-8. They went to San Francisco and snapped the streak. That's where they are tonight. Jordan Montgomery got into trouble early, but got out of it nicely here in the fourth by bouncing a curveball. He's yet to allow a run. It helps that he has good defense behind him. Brendan Donovan, subbing for Nolan Arnato, says, you know, I have a gold glove too, not 10 of them. We are now scoreless in the seventh inning. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. So I understand there are tickets available for tomorrow night's game at City Park. City SC will be playing in round one of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup match. They will be facing Union Omaha from League One, which is a few tiers lower than the MLS. City SC will likely be playing some of their younger players, but they are taking this game pretty seriously. We've been working behind the scenes to try and get a step ahead. Uh, we've followed the Omaha for a couple of weeks now. Um, so, yeah, we know what's coming our way. Um, we've had a preseason scrimmage against them with City too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we had a good uh, picture of what they might be about. Obviously, it's not the finished product. Obviously, they had a couple of trialists. Um, but, yeah, it's challenging, but it's also exciting. The Battle Hawks did not make the playoffs. Three takeaways from this season. They're a really good team. They had an incredible fan base and a head coach who was really likable and who is coming back. Whether it was a fan booing at the game or either way, they're a fan. They, they had the right to do what they want, but I, I do know that, you know, they're just passionate about football. Um, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back. You know, I, everything looks like pushing forward for 2024. On Mondays, we often play hit and run with a celebrity, and they don't come any bigger than Albert Pujols. If there were not a thing called baseball in this world, what would you have done with your life? Uh, being an engineer, you know, that's something that I want to do. And then, you know, probably play basketball. I love the game of basketball. That was my second sport. Your all-time <laughs> favorite manager? Well, definitely Tony La Rosa. You know, Tony La Rosa, he's, he's, he's like a dad to me, somebody that believed in me, especially early in my career when, when nobody was believing on it. Reggie Jackson once said that hitting is better than sex. Can you explain the high when you hit a baseball perfect? You no, know, hitting the homers is just when you know that you hit one in the sweet spot. The funny thing is that you don't even feel it. It comes out of your back and you're like, wow, you know? And you just walk around and say, man, did I just do that? And sometimes you don't even know how you did it, you know? And you just, and it's, it's a great thing because the less you think, the better success that you will have in the game. Who was the one pitcher you just did not want to face? Roy Holiday. Roy Holiday was pretty tough. I think not just on me, I think on everybody. The music you listen to before a game to get you into the mood. I love Christian music. Who was the one guy that helped you with your swing when you struggled the most? Wow, the guy that even helped me even up, up to last year, you know, a guy that I go to was Mark. You know, Mark McGuire, and I have a, a good friend of mine that probably knows, one of my best friends that knows my swing probably better than myself, Rene Rojas, and he works for the Houston Astro right now. What would Albert Pujols most like to be remembered for? This is a great, strong Christian guy that loves the Lord, you know, and just use the talent to play the game of baseball, but most important, you know, give back to the community because at the end of the day, I think we all have responsibility on giving back, and that's something that I'm, that I'm able to do to the Pools Family Foundation. Yes, he's done a lot of that. Bill Bennett, our editor. And one more thing, Albert said he has not watched a baseball game this year. Wow, <laughs> but we know he's been on the golf course. Yes. All right, Frank, thanks. Andy Cohen put the Real Housewives on the map. How he'll now be part of a star-studded path here in his hometown. Final preps are underway in Kansas City for the NFL Draft. 
crews are hanging banners and putting the final touches on the stage set up in front of Kansas City's Union Station. The draft kicks off Thursday night. Tickets go on sale to the public tomorrow morning to see the U.S. men's national team play at City Park. St. Louis's new soccer stadium is hosting two games on June 28th as part of the CONCACAF Gold Cup Tournament. You can buy your tickets beginning at 10 a.m. on SeatGeek and on the City app. And Andy Cohn is being honored by his hometown. The Bravo TV exec behind The Real Housewives and Watch What Happens Live is getting a star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. The induction ceremony is set for Friday, May 5th. That's in front of the Moonrise Hotel on Del Mar. Clayton Highgrad already has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Jimmy's guests tonight, Kate Beckinsale and Rain Wilson. Don't forget to start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.